Welcome to LA2M. I'm your host. My name is Corey Dunham. And LA2M is basically just uh, an educational meeting, a uh, marketing meeting that we have uh, every month on the second Wednesday of the month. And, uh, and we appreciate you guys all coming here, breaking the uh, bad weather. I'm just kidding, because I was talking to somebody back there just to say that I know sometimes when people see snow, they all of a sudden, I'm not going to go anywhere. It's too slippery. So thank you guys for coming out. Uh, today we have a speaker uh, is Steve Bennett, and he's the founding partner of Real Big Marketing in Jackson, and he wasn't our original speaker, so we definitely appreciate him coming in today. Uh, so I'm going to introduce him a little bit more in just a second. I just want to say we have, uh, currently we have yearly sponsors uh, for LA2M, which is very important uh, for us to run these meetings. Uh, my company, DDB Marketing Design. Uh, as one of the sponsors, and basically we help companies that are struggling to keep their marketing up to date and, and current. And also we have uh, University of Michigan Credit Union and 3.7 Designs also. Um, so we encourage you uh, here at LA2M uh, to both obviously get educated, uh, also do, to do some networking, which you can also do that afterward. You can stick, stick around because we still have this room after that, after we finish. And also, too, um, let me see. Yeah, well, I, guess, I guess that's it for now. We're trying to uh, start the meetings much quicker now and improve the feedback we've been getting. So, uh, once again, Steve Bennett, our founding partner of uh, Big Deal Marketing in Jackson, and he leverages the power of the internet to enhance the way customers get their work done. Steve has worked in web development and e commerce since 2008 and enjoys sharing enthusiasm and Jerry's. Enjoy sharing his enthusiasm at meetups and word camps. Um, you can find him and you'll see his contact info uh, up on the screen later. So thank you very much, Steve. Let's give it a big hand. Thank you for giving me the time to speak today. It's a real, real honor to be able to interact with you guys. Uh, it's, it's especially nice and ironic to be having this conversation today. Richard Sears would probably be rolling in his grave today. The Sears company has his last chance at existing today. So what do you think Richard Sears would say about the, the landscape of e-commerce? Do you think he would be excited about it? Do you think he would have been the guy like Bezos who would have come up with new and interesting ways to go to market? When he came up with the Sears catalog, okay, that thing was amazing. This great concept of a piece of mail you could send out and people could just order stuff and it would come to their house. And that was exacerbated or, or made really powerful with the advent of uh, the invention, the, the implementation of, of stronger shipping uh, methods with the United States Postal Service in the 1800s. I think he would have probably been excited. I think he would have probably been much like Bezos and not like the current uh, administration. I don't think he would have let it go to pop. He would have figured out some way to do something cool. Anyway, enough about Sears. That, that's, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. So let's get down to the interesting part. The digital e-commerce, which is a little bit different. So I want to kind of clarify that what we're talking about today is a subset of e-commerce in general. So if I say digital e-commerce, what do you guys think of? What kind of products are digital sold e-commerce? Give me some ideas. Book. Perfect. Music. Exactly. The music. Yes. Audio. So these things are, are awesome because they have no cost of goods sold. So that's one of the things that we're going to get into in a little bit. But let's start out with um, this idea of superheroes. Who's your favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Give me some other ones. Batman. Batman? Yeah. Captain America. Captain America, that's awesome. I'm leading you, right? Yeah. Nobody. Uh, what's so special about these guys? They, they're cool. They are normal, right? They're different than the existing set of people on the planet. Right? Human beings are kind of boring, right? Like, we're capable of, of doing some amazing things. Uh, Captain America being one of the most exemplary plain human beings. Batman is pretty awesome because he's a plain human being with a great set of toys. 
But even so, they're different than their own human being. They don't just go about their day to day. They do something special. And you know, you got Superman, he can fly. The Wolverine can rip people apart and regrow uh, his body parts if he gets attacked, right? Elongated man. Who knows about elongated man? One of the worst superheroes of all time. They actually did a, 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 a remake of him. They put him in the CW. Um, uh, who's the speedster? What's his name? Flash. Flash, right? They, they have elongated man in the Flash which was great because he really was one of the worst superheroes ever. He, he got his superpower by drinking soda pop. And, and that was it, he made a super concentrated soda pop that all elongated people drank. <laughs> horrible, horrible guy. And we got Wonder Woman, who was perfect. But nobody mentioned. You set that up, I think. Nobody mentioned Nick Cage. No, that one. Nick Cage does some great stuff with his characters, catching on fire. But all that superpower stuff is cool, but not as cool as digital e-commerce. <laughs> digital e-commerce, I think, is pretty sweet because it is like e-commerce, you know, like us normal human beings, but there's no cost <coughs> of goods sold, which means that we don't have to work so hard to get our product out the door. We don't have to work so hard paying someone else to work for us to fill boxes. We don't have to fill the boxes ourselves and get them up the door. Think of it this way. If, if I sell videos, I get the orders and I'm excited, but I have to fill those orders, whether it's t-shirts or pillows or Coffee mugs, right? If, if I take the order, I have to do the work to get it out the door, and I have to manage cost of goods sold. Digital products, no cost. So with physical products, I take the order and I have stress. With digital products, I'm chilling on the beach, right? So how many of you guys have seen this? And I just pop off on my YouTube. You're watching something, anything, and an advertisement comes up. I can teach you how to get a six figure sale every day of the week, and you don't have to do anything, right? It's, those, in my mind, are kind of bait and switch, right? They're, they're giving you something that sounds really good, but the truth of the matter is that the superhero doesn't exist other than digital e commerce. You can find somebody else's product and sell it, drop ship, then you don't have to deal with it. That's a form of e-commerce that's almost digital. But if you can make the product yourself, let's say you're a musician and you come up with five great songs, you can create an album and you can sell it. But you never have to create a DVD. You can just send those MP3s out as a digital item. If you write a book, you can easily create that as an Amazon item and sell it on Amazon. Look my Amazon guy. There you are. So, you know, these things are easy to do in 2019 because we have word processing capabilities and we have tools that we can put our products online. Mostly tax free. That's a good way to put it. The tax laws are changing, and I think that in the next year or two, we're going to see some major changes. Because even now, I've got clients that sell products online, and they didn't know that they got taxed on shipping. Did you know there was tax on shipping in Michigan? It's crazy. So they're paying 6%, not just on the product, but also on the shipping. So I have clients calling me up, they're like, I don't get it. Why do I have to pay this 6% on the shipping? This seems totally wrong. And it threw a lot of people for a loop. But if you're using tools like tax jar, you know, those things, those fees are applied immediately. They go straight out the door. The client doesn't even care. So it's another story. Anyway, mostly tax free. No limit on product size. No tools or tech besides the computer. You can do it yourself.
painless updates. So if you write software, you can easily upgrade the code and distribute it and give updates to your clients and it's a reason to bring people back. So I'm a strong proponent of the open source community. I'm a big fan of WordPress. All the websites that we build are done with WordPress. Um, and we use some tools in WordPress to deliver software for our clients. We have two uh, businesses that we run. One is Real Big Plugins and the other is Real Big Marketing. Real Big Marketing is a branding and web development firm. Real Big Plugins sells plugins to enhance other people's products on lunch. Uh, instant delivery, uh, and you can live anywhere on the planet that you want. So we talked about earlier, what can digital products be? Ebooks, quizzes, reports, articles, forums. I mean, these are all things that maybe you don't typically think of as e-commerce items, but you can monetize all of these things. So how do we do it? There are three parts to any ecosystem. Your audience, your sales channel, and your product. So all of the things that we talk about as marketers start to apply. When you're dealing with your audience, you have to build that up. So you need to think of things like email, social media. How am I going to build my audience? How am I going to find the people who are relevant? So you need to employ things like maybe digital advertising, online advertising. Um, so you, my point is that you have to get that part of your ecosystem figured out. What's that going to look like? What tools are you going to use to build and maintain a relationship with your audience? The second part is the sales funnel, right? Where we deal with making the transaction with our clients. What tools can we use to get that done? I'll ask you guys, what, what e-commerce tools do you know of? My name. Amazon. Great. Give me another one. Shopify. Oh. Wonderful. Four. Is that WooCommerce? WooCommerce? Spotify. Don't know about that one, right? What you if you're, you're a musician, music? yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right? That you can use the cell phone. Yes. Yeah, that one's okay. larger scope of cell phone in general. Yes, absolutely. What's we that? use EDD. Easy Digital Downloads, which is a major free plugin. It starts out free. Nothing in this world is free. <laughs> Nothing, all right? So WooCommerce and Easy Digital Downloads. I'm going to call EDD from this point forward because everybody calls it back around the industry. Uh, they're both free in WordPress.org's repository. You can download them. You can start selling online for zero cost. But what you find out pretty quickly is that nothing is free. Your clients need a reprint of their receipt, $45 for the plugins for receipts, right? And if I want to do um, uh, repeat download, you know, repeat payments, repeat downloads, $85 for the extension to get that done. So all of these things add up. If you're going to start an e-commerce business, you can't start for free, but you have better be thinking about the capital that you need to run your store. It's not much. You can get away with running most platforms under a grant. For example, EDD's platform is around $800 for an annual subscription to everything. You're going to ask questions. That's what I was going to ask. Is it one time fee? Is it monthly? Is it, I mean, I'm sure some of those. Yeah, it's an annual. They've, they've set it up. They call it an all-in program. And you can buy that plugin by itself for EDD, which is, I think, $185. But once you've added up all these other little things, about $800 a year is a pretty good number for getting an online store running. But that's pretty darn cheap overhead, right? And the cost of goods doesn't include any products. You can sell anything that you can come up with, a webinar, a book, a song, all these things, you just load them up. And if you change the edition of the book, bang, it's instant. You don't have any inventory later on. 
You don't have to throw out albums or throw out CDs. You just literally start distributing the new product. And that's why I think it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, we just talked about that. And this is one, probably the main screen within the uh, We talked about views, right? On the back end, you get the dashboard, what you interact with as the store owner. And really simply, you upload the product, you give it a price, you select a couple of options, upload your file, and hit publish. And it's that simple, you're done. Then you have to go through and develop your audience and all that stuff. So we can talk about how to develop audience, we can talk about the tools that we use, we can talk about anything that you want to discuss with regard to digital e-commerce, and that's where we're at now. Any questions? Yes. So about dealing with that might be the kind of question. Dealing with sales tax across sure. all states now. I think it's it's if I've been vaguely paying attention to the laws over the last couple of years now, basically, if you sell anything online that's a physical product or that someone in a, you know, the, the way the laws are set up, how do you how do you help your customers? Um, do you help your customers at all figure out what the situations? It used to be really hard. And we would we would have relationships with accountants and actually have our clients hook up with accounts who understood the industry and we would just facilitate that relationship and say but now we have tools like Hotjar. Hotjar is fantastic. If you use WooCommerce and you buy WooCommerce services extension, you get Hotjar for free. And Hotjar figures out all of those taxes for you. Whatever the laws are in any state, city, municipality, it's all figured out ahead of time and it records it in the report. So you just simply send a report to your accountant and your accountant takes care of it. No fuss, no muss. It's beautiful. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Our store, Real Big Plugins, was started we made mistakes when we opened our store. The biggest one was that we didn't develop enough of an audience up front. So we continue to struggle with building our email list. And I, so I would encourage any of you who are thinking about doing digital commerce or e-commerce in general, work on your email list up front because your email list is very much like an ATM machine. You should have developed a relationship or you should be developing a relationship with your clients based on great content. Anything that you can write that's relevant and recent, you know, if you can get something out there in the right time frame for a client who's looking to buy, you're relevant and recent to their needs, then you can turn their need into a payment to you. So great content is absolutely key. So I would work on, um, if I did it over again, I would have spent probably a good three or four months developing a year to two years worth of content ahead of time. Webinars, white papers, emails, all of that stuff, and just have it ready to go. That would have been much, much smarter. My wife and I just redid our kitchen. We had a flood. Uh, and, and the flood literally wiped out our entire kitchen. We had a hot water heater under our sink. It was on demand. And so this little um, spigot popped out of the hot water feed of the sink and locked in between the door and the, the cabinet and sprayed hot water all night long into our kitchen. And it did about $50,000 worth of damage. So the guys came in the next day, they took out all the cabinets, they took the floor out, they had us down to, to floor joists in some spots. And it was amazing. But through all of this, we got to buy stuff. And my wife said, I'd really love to have one of these professional ovens, a Viking. So she looks them up and they're $10,000. Just ridiculously expensive. And I said, honey, I love you. I would do anything for you but that. 
I said, but let me, let me look at this for a little while. So I got a light and I started digging around. It turns out that you can buy off-brand products made by the same manufacturers that make Viking if you just look hard at them. So I started doing research and I tracked it back and I found out who the manufacturers were. And there's a company in China called Haixian, H-Y-X-I-O-N, and they have another brand called Viking, uh, not Viking, but um, called Thor Kitchen. Same product, uh, looks identical, functions identically, but little known, and they retail for $5,000. And I said, well, now we're getting somewhere. So I called them up and I said, look, I'm gonna buy your product. I have a client. I, I do branding. I have a client who wants to do a photo shoot. She wants to buy an oven. Can you sell me an oven? And they said, let me look. So they looked it up and they said, we don't have a distributor in Michigan. Would you like to be a distributor? I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll even create a store and I'll sell your product. And, and they were like, okay, great, let's, let's do that. So I filled out some paperwork and they sold me this thing and I got it for a pretty darn good deal. Brought it home, and my wife was saying to me the whole time, why aren't you making this store? Why don't you do this? You can actually make some money at it. And, and the whole time I'm thinking, because I have to deal with the products. Yeah. And so I will take it back around and say, digital e-commerce is fantastic because I don't have to do a cost of goods sold, buying these stoves, delivering them, dealing with them, but I can sell my yeah. plugins at zero cost to me except for my time, and it's amazing. So, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. So, how do you, how do you promote? You have a digital e commerce site. Well, I mean, I guess it's no different than e commerce site, but what, do you, what, from a digital perspective, do you promote or do something different to market than a normal e commerce site that has hardly, you know, that may have a brick and, brick and mortar store associated with it? Yeah, uh, I, I do have a partner, and he is very vocal. And he, really spends a lot of time online. Um, he's got uh, podcasts that he does, and there's a lot of FaceTime with other people in our industry. We focus on the WordPress community. We spend a lot of time at WordCamps. Every WordCamp in the region, we're there. And we don't go to WordCamp and reserve a booth or a table and set up a shop. That's not, that's not what we're doing. We're out giving presentations like this one, we're uh, meeting people, we're introducing ourselves to other developers because all our plugins are pretty niche. We do, we develop products that other developers use to get their work done. That also keeps our support costs down. We don't develop themes, we don't develop um, like a forms plugin that's a retail type of tool because we don't want to have the maintenance or the overhead costs. We look for other tools, like, um, are you guys familiar with um, uh, 3.7 Designs uh, Project Panorama? Are you familiar with that product? Product, product Panorama is a plugin for WordPress that gives you the ability to manage projects pretty simply. Um, and we build extensions for Project Panorama. They don't have the ability natively to do Gantt charts in Project Panorama. But a Gantt chart is an amazing tool. that lets people visualize a project from beginning to end. So we develop a Gantt chart extension for their plugin. Anytime Ross sells that plugin, he sends out an email that says, do you want to buy the Gantt chart extension? We sell the Gantt chart extension and give Ross 5% of the So that's a lot. I have a very small business that I'm starting What I'd like to do is actually sell some of, actually, Alma makes, and he's going to make my, like, t-shirts and tote bags and ballet gear that goes with it. Yeah. So that's what, I'm, really, the only part I need online to be able to have people buy. Yeah. I, so what do you suggest, like, what thing do I need for that? What do you think? And something very small, maybe not even the $100. What, what yeah, how are you, how much? How are you finding it? Set by yourself? Yeah, just me. Yeah, so I would probably look at something like EBD or WooCommerce. Easy digital download. Okay. Easy digital downloads would be my first choice because it's really <coughs> You know, we talk about niching down in marketing, something specifically. 
easy digital downloads is built for digital downloads. That's all they do. So, okay. And so I can take photographs of his t-shirts and totes. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh. Sell it that way. That's the oh, way. physical products. No. So, I have a so I, if you're doing physical products, I would look at the Woo Commerce instead. Woo, uh, W O O. Oh, look. Yeah, they got more tools for shipping, uh, for tax purposes. That stuff is a little more robust on the Woo yeah. side. Yeah, uh, mine's a small. It's small. I don't actually. I don't really want it to be very big. Yeah, you know. Um, there. Let's see. You know. Um, Peaceful Dragon School of Tai Chi yes. here in town. Yeah, yeah. They're a client of ours and they use Blue Powers to do exactly what you're talking oh. about, but instead of ballet, they do yeah. Tai Chi. Oh. Same kind of stuff. Yeah. And if you want to reach out to her, um, I can connect you to her so you can talk about how she goes about doing her thing. Okay. Yeah, any other like security concerns in regards to digital as opposed to physical e commerce? You know, that's a really interesting conversation. A lot of people would put a lot of effort into protecting their content. We found that it really is kind of a moot point. The people who steal your stuff and, s and try to resell it, they don't really make that much money at it because they have to support it if they sell it. And they don't want to support it. They're lazy. They, they just want to get something to sell for cheap. So we found that that is almost always a failure. We don't worry too much about our products going out the door and being used to something else. It's just not, it's not worth the hassle for us to put out there. So. But I mean, like, so from a, from a digital standpoint, if I were to sell uh, a piece of music, mm -hmm. you know, and that I don't want someone to then take and rebroadcast to other things, is there, I mean, from a security standpoint, is there ways um, digitally to protect that? No different than People who sell CDs or have music stores online, Amazon has probably got some DRM software going into their stuff. But let's face it, once you play that and send it through a system that doesn't deal with the DRM, you can make a copy of it pretty much without issue. So we're all stuck with the same problems. But from our site, we can certainly <coughs> Obviously, you know, we don't want people taking stuff from our site. That yeah. I hate to say, you know, security tourism or reputation, but sometimes that's it. You only saw, you only demonstrate part of the song, and then you saw the whole song. Right. So, so I'm a runner. Carter does a lot of photography for for uh, for running. So I get sent to me a, a copy of myself running, but there's yeah. always going to be a watermark across the exactly. by the, you know, by the yeah. If it's a artist. if it's a photograph. Low res. Right. It's going to be low res. It's going to be a watermark. Exactly. I, I, I can't reuse it until I digitally buy it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, those, the thing about EDD that's nice is that the tools are built in for that system already. You, if you think of the product that's digital for sale, somebody else has already done that. So you're not going to have to be about the wheel. You're not going to have to go to somebody and say, hey, yeah, I want to do this special thing. You have to be really special to make that happen in 2018. Most extensions exist. Any other questions? More. I got more. Well, no, um, no. back to my question. So when um, a lot of us tend to shop at you know, the main couple of sites online all the time, because Amazon makes it so easy, is there, um, do people, um, and, um, you know, do people tend to not trust some of the unknown kind of stores online and how do you set yourself up so it's um, a site that, you know, you may not have been, been to, you might not have credit card information in or more, like how do you sure. give people that reassurance that like you may not have heard of us, but you're going to, you know. Okay, so let's use a common kind of language here. If I say friction to purchase, who knows what I'm talking about? So this idea that if you make things hard, or if you make things untrustworthy, you're, you're adding friction to the purchase process, right? And so to remove friction, you start to do things like simplify the checkout process, but you can also do things like, like let's say that there's an accreditation in your field. Get accredited and put that certificate on the page. Go ahead and, and so for example, authorize.net is a great payment gateway. They have a badge that you can put on the site that says authorized and protected, right? So you can 
you can badge yourself up and use the tools that are given to you as a vendor that tell the consumer this is safe, this is easy, go ahead and buy now. One of those is to get reviews. So you can set up, uh, again, another extension, any EV or e-commerce or whatever system you choose will be the ability to let your clients get reviews of your products five star system. Use it, especially if you know you're good at what you do. And if you get bad reviews, learn how to deal with them gracefully. Other people don't care that you get bad reviews in most cases. They care that you deal with them really well. That's the important thing. If somebody says your product sucks, put right underneath it, we're really sorry if you have a problem. We'd really like to help you. What can we do? Email me, here's my address. That's all you have to do. Does that help? Yes. Great. So what what is like some of the most important things in the e-commerce site, digital or regular, that is most important for the site? Is it you know is if it I, the browser? Is it the quickness of the site? Is it you know obviously data data is key obviously. You know what you the content you have in there you alluded to your mailing your email list, you know the context you have that data. I understand aside from the data and the information, what what are some of the key points for an e-commerce site or a digital site that are most important for consumers? That you think. You take a little bit of the wind out of my sails by saying, other than the data. Because really, the data is the most important thing. But I'm talking about from the consumer. So yeah. for me, I'm coming in, like Leah just said, she's going to go to some site. What, what as marketers and or business owners, should we be thinking about to make it easy for our customers from this from the sure. site perspective? Sure. So there's a, a, a philosophy, a, an industry, that exists uh, around branding and web development and workflows um, called, I think it's called service design. And so it's taking the idea of looking at your workflows and analyzing them from the end user's point of view. So your UX and your UI need to be incredibly streamlined. You need to be thinking about what the client wants to achieve and give them the tools to get it done. Take everything else out of the way. Your site doesn't have to be. Um, a lot of people put effort into websites that are really pretty, and really pretty is often heavy. Pretty takes time to deliver across the internet, especially on mobile. So Google is trying to overcome that with things called CAMP, uh, their special pages for blog posts, but they really aren't designed to deliver static content pages or product. So we're kind of stuck with this low speed connection. When you're thinking about workflows and end users, getting rid of the pretty pictures sometimes is the best thing you can do. What do you mean by UX and UI? What does that mean? User experience. Oh, okay. User interface. Two different things. The interface is the design, the pretty, the CSS, the you know what that means? Yes. Cascade style sheets. The UX is the workflow, the experience of what the consumer received from the minute they your website and before that, all the way to the point where they completed the sale and the end. I don't know if I answered your question. Well, yeah, I mean, so I guess, like, from the standpoint of, yes, I understand that sometimes you don't want to hold the your website, obviously. I, I come from. I also come from a graphic design background, so visually, yeah. please, visually pleasing is very important. So, but I think from the standpoint of you know one click checkout, uh, things like that, yeah. and, you know, to me that as a consumer, I want ease when I when I purchase something online, whether it's a ebook, I want to be able to find it, click it, buy it, and be done. I don't want to sit there and have to reload my information every time. I want sites that are to save my information. Are the things that I opt in for to make it easy for me. You can you save your credit card number? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I just probably recite it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I do. Well, it's done. It's all encrypted. I'm not worried about that. Hmm. I, I worry more about me plugging it in than someone seeing me plug it in. 
So if I'm an unsecure, you know, so where I shop is important, obviously. You know, and I do this for everybody. Every consumer needs to be aware from a security standpoint. That was the question I asked earlier. Yeah. From a security standpoint, you know, I you know, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because I think that a lot of what you're asking is subjective, and it depends on the it depends on what you're selling and where you're at in, in the world. If I'm a little tiny um, purveyor of four songs in my own CD, then my experience is far different than say Amazon. Right? So if I'm if I'm that little guy. If I'm just starting out, which is, you know, we're talking about beginner digital commerce, then I would be looking at simplifying the workflow. I would, I would be thinking about quick conversion and getting people to make that snap judgment and not trying to get people to sit behind it. I wouldn't want a long form sales page where I've got them reading, you know, five different touch points where they might say yes, here, 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 and here. I just want them to hit the site, see my five songs, listen to 30 seconds of it, and have an option to find out. To your point, one click checkout would be ideal for that scenario. And I would do things like badge up, make, make our end users know that it's safe. I would have reviews right there, but that one page would be ideal. Now, if I'm on Amazon, I'm trying to distract people in that purchase process, upsell and cross sell the whole time. So, different experience. If you, if you do have products that rely on each other, you may really want to consider how you can upsell at the small store level. Let's say, you know, I had that chart up earlier with the three parts of the workflow. You've got your uh, audience, your, uh, your tools that deliver the product and the, the sale itself, right? And so if you can, if you can enable that process, you take the profit and you drive it back into the store to develop another album or another book or another iteration. And you may want to try and upsell or cross-sell that second item at some significant discount, especially with digital. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's selling at half price because it didn't cost you anything in the first place. So like um, I have four plugins for Ross's, four extensions for Ross's plugin. I can sell one for $40, or I can sell all four of them for $90. But when each one of them is $40, $90 purchase is a huge buy. And we get people that say yes to that, but they won't because we're giving them significant value. So I'd be looking for ways to upsell and cross-sell even at the small Yeah. So um, this is kind of two questions, but um, one is, products. 
the first one that I would come up with is the one that you give away. Because when you give away something, people, uh, especially if it's quality, it provides significant value, people will jump on it to get the free version. It's a great way to bring in people into an organization and develop your email list. Once you've got the, those people in the funnel, then you can start upselling and cross-selling into the next level of product, which is you know, the, the mid-tier. And then once you've got them in the mid-tier, you know, this, this is all a long-term process. It starts with the simple free, but you, you should have, at the end of this, some major purchase. For you, it would be dance classes, right? So introduce something for free, work them into maybe an ongoing webinar where you teach the children to do pirouettes and yeah. call it a master class. I, yeah, yeah, I'm making it up. But the eventual goal is to get people to come into the store and actually take a ballet class. Yeah. So tiers, build up, start with free and work your way up to the major approaches. Does that help? Thank you. Do you have a question? Yeah, I just was hoping for a quick uh, overview of your perspective on that. Pros and cons of um, Shopify. I've used Shopify. Um, I had a client who sold um, cabinets online, and they used Shopify. And we had we had issues. It was a great store to just sell the product, but when you wanted to extend it, we had trouble connecting. Now, this is four years ago, but we had trouble connecting it to other systems. Um, you know, Google's system for listing products in their store was really hard, really clunky. We had trouble uh, integrating the ERP system uh, in Shopify. But as soon as we took them over to WordPress, we were able to use more open architecture, more open APIs, and just kind of. So, it's effective, it's cheap. All right. So, first of all, thank you, Steve, for this. Thank you. Glad you were here. We appreciate the information. Great information. So many of us, um, you know, in our daily businesses or side businesses that we do, we wear multiple hats. This is all information that we, that we need that we can use for ourselves or share for the clients that we work with. You know, we 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 want to be subject matter experts, and that's why we bring in such a broad uh, range of speakers here. So if you're sitting here, well, I don't have any di digital e-commerce. Think about how that does apply to what you do have. Uh, because all these can, can kind of be intertwined. And, and the idea here is for us to share information. Um, you know, we have a room here. We hope you guys will talk. We hope everybody meets each other. Um, this is actually towards the end here with my favorite part of Valley 2 and always has been, is where everybody gets a chance to stand up, introduce themselves, and say hi. You know, we have a smaller crowd here, so before everybody gets out of here on your lunchtime, I'd like to go around the room. We can start, just stand up. Say who you are, where you're from. That way, before you leave today, hopefully you can connect with somebody and make this meeting. Maybe that the last time you met that person, that made a difference for you. Maybe that one little nugget that Steve shared today was like, ah, that aha moment, where you're like, that's what I need. I'm missing that. So that's what, as an organization, you know, that's one of the things we hope to do. First of all, share great information, and then also help people connect. We hope all of you, we've done business, I've, I've done business with fellow LHM members. Um, we have a great network. We've got over 2,000 qualified people in our email list. You know, I'd love to have 2,000 people here, I know you can, but I mean, I'd love to have 100 people here, and there's a reason we don't have anyone. So please, share LHM with your friends. You know, share the videos that we have. Roger posts all these great videos. Carter puts up great pictures. Share it on your social medias. Um, if you're here, check in before you leave. Check in that you're at LA Twin. That helps us, you know, grow LA Twin. That helps us share uh, our message. So um, if we can start right up here in front, you can just say hello to everybody. We appreciate it. Hello, I'm Sandy Casterin, and I'm a ballet teacher for adults. So come to my ballet class next week, uh, and children uh, from Ann Arbor, and uh, and also. Does my artwork and, and beautiful, beautiful t shirts and programs, and I'm excited to start again. Where's your studio? Um, right now, I'll be renting a place on uh, Huron Parkway called Peachy Fitness. It's sort of in the old woods, that, that area. Um, I'm just going to rent for a while until I really get a, a place of mine. Thank you. Oh, Alma. <laughs> Good evening, it's a good segue here. Um, Elmo Morales, and I, uh, I, I picked
print t-shirts for, for many people in town. I've been in business for a long time. I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. You know, my last project was a ping pong uh, business. Uh, it was in Dexter and it was great. And uh, I got a new project. I'm renting studio space <laughs> to dancers. I'm creating a, uh, a um, great opportunity opened up. I'm creating a, uh, a space for cultural and uh, performing arts because there's so many artists out there who need a space we need to, to practice and they need to uh, West Stadium Boulevard. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Elmo, I play store, in the downtown store play, I call Elmo's t-shirts. Uh, Hello. 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 I'm Jack Caplini. Uh, I'm a freelance content creator and digital marketer. So I create uh, video content and written content, graphic content. Uh, and um, I manage search and display campaigns for various small businesses, uh, mostly local. Um, uh, most recently, I worked on the Shri Tanadar for Governor campaign, where I managed a lot of his digital marketing and created the commercials and um, digital ads you might have seen, if anyone was familiar with that campaign. So uh, that's what I do, and uh, yeah. And Jack's doing my website, which is, it's not quite finished, but it's gorgeous. Attested his website design. Uh, Jason Burbo, I work at Sharp Products, which is a bow string instrument mail order company. And uh, last fall, we just rolled out our digital products, digital downloads, uh, sheet music titles, and uh, massive games. Sharp, the electronic company? <coughs> Sharp, S H A R. Oh, you do? Yeah. Music. Sure. Music violin. Yeah, violin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Susan. Oh, Susan Harris. I'm the one who asked all the questions on the web, like, where is this place at Dan Food? Thank you, Leo. Yeah, it's nice. But, so, anyway, I'm Susan. Hey, Susan, you, you, you're forgetting the best part of your, your introduction. What do you do, Susan? Nothing. Right. <laughs>
they're on their uh, 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 they're well for the next year or so. So I'm always looking for new clients, but particularly looking for because my main clients are in the LA. I also do social media for them, and uh, I do have the e-commerce site, which I have the uh, um, I, I put up uh, these images low res on uh, Facebook. But I have a tool where I can take my e-commerce site and take off the copy protection. Should say it will erase the run with a photograph running. Uh, it pays me in advance. I give away the picture for this group. I give away the high-res pictures that way rather than tie on Facebook with it. So I just so if you just love one of these pictures on <laughs> Facebook and you've got to have the high-res, ask me, I'll tell you how to, how to find that. And, if you really love it and you want to get your picture out of coffee, but then I don't give away. But I'll give you a discount for that. So, but uh, smug mug is I did say what I use for my conversation. Like I, I really like their mapping software. They lay that out pretty well. Okay. I'm Roger Rail. I do uh, uh, videos of worthy community events. And um, I also uh, help with uh, different imaging issues, with local issues. Um, and I run this Ann Arbor Video Interest Group, which uh, normally meets on Wednesdays, but we're meeting tomorrow night. And we're going to be, uh, one of our members is going to talk about a documentary project that he's been working on. And all of the know-how and preparation and issues involved with that. So if you're involved with video in any way, Check it out, it's uh, A2 VIG, Ann Arbor Video Interest Group. So A2 VIG dot org. And uh, it's, where will it be? We're, we're, we're meeting tomorrow at 6.30 at Carlisle's out on Jackson Road. So um, you, you can go to the website and RSVP so we know how many seats to set up. Um, and we meet usually the second. Wednesday each of the month, plus or minus one day. So I'll always check out the website. The last book it was minus one day. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we want to, some people can't make it on Wednesday, so we try to shift the days make sure everybody has a chance to just Anyway, thanks. So, and uh, so I'm Jimmy Zio, in addition to uh, my role as president of LHM, I've been involved with LHM for over six years. Uh, it is a wonderful organization. So. I want to see it continue to grow. We have great volunteers uh, that help uh, behind the scenes to make sure this happens. Um, as Corey alluded to, we have great sponsors, uh, and we appreciate that. If you would like to promote your business, certainly you can see myself or Corey, uh, and we can discuss with you sponsorship opportunities uh, with LHM. We send out emails each month. Uh, you probably see Stacy is our uh, is our admin. She's not here today. Um, she works uh, with, with, uh, print, uh, with a print company. But they do a lot of UM stuff, so it's rushing for her. So uh, she's very busy, but normally you'll see her here. Um, we'd love to have you uh, be a part of LHUM. We hope you keep coming back. Again, bring a friend, bring a colleague, bring a client. Uh, we share great information. Again, Steve, thank you so much for, for kicking in and being here today. You're at Milton Jackson. We appreciate that. Come back and see us. You're always welcome. You guys are all welcome to be here. Um, we love having you here, so we hope to have things continue to grow. Corey, I think you've got a few things that you want to still say housekeeping wise. Yeah, uh, basically getting surveys on the table, and it really gives us really good feedback, and we have been making a lot of changes based on the feedback. So if you can, you know, let us about, know about the meeting today, an awesome meeting today, and uh, also to any other potential speakers you may know of that you may suggest or topics you want to hear about. Um, if that's key, when we're on that working, somebody knows somebody that can contribute, but right? everybody can contribute. So um, if you can fill that out, of course, uh, um, number seven, too, also, um, along with the cards on the table, has all the social media connections. So definitely check in and get connected on one or more of these um, different uh, sites here. So I think that's about it. And feel free to continue networking if you want to stick around and talk. Uh, also get Steve's contact info if you want to talk with him further. And what else do we have? Two, two real quick things. Yes. So we're, we're switching over our email system right now. So we're hoping we make sure we have everybody's email. So if you're new, make sure on that survey, put your contact info so we have it. And make sure you plug in those little cards on the table. 
take it, pin it up by your desk or whatever, remind yourself. Again, come back again next month. I think we're going to be. Is it here always? It's going to always be here. It's the second Wednesday of every month. 1130, we're in the door. We start right at 12 noon, and we're out of here about 1 o'clock. So you can always uh, time your day. Uh, we're in and out quickly. Uh, we'll, uh, I don't know who next what month's speaker is, so we'll make sure you got that information. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Corey. Which is uh, February 13th, the second Wednesday. I'm sorry? Right. Oh, okay. And uh, it's going to be Zingerman's customer service, most important recipe by Brad Hedman. All right, so hey, let, let me tell you what. Come next month. Brad is, is a good friend of mine. I didn't realize it was Zingerman's next month. Puts on a phenomenal talk. If you know anything about Zingerman's yeah. and the brand and what they mean to Ann Arbor and how they've grown, Brad has been there from day one with Zingerman's and has helped grow and keep runs the catalog side of the business. Phenomenal talk. He's been here. It's been a couple years since Brad's been here. But next month, great topic. So come back, bring a friend, bring a colleague, bring a client. We'd love to see you guys. Awesome. Anything else? No, that's it. Hey, thanks for being here today. Feel free to visit with each other. Thank you. Thanks, Brad.